fix it for this podcast because okay. we are live <laughs> and that is that that's podcast radio definitely fix that later though. <laughs> anyway so thank you so much for joining us all the way from san francisco yes yes and we're being recorded video wise right now oh, not just God. podcast oh, God. okay that's why i took a shower today <laughs> and fixed my hair anyway um so now i met you at a festival that now I forget the name. No, it was Desert Stars Festival, mm -hmm. and there was a. It was really cool. It was like in the middle of nowhere. My friend had won tickets, and we just decided to take a road trip up there. And that's where I met you. And then you have that magazine, and you told me that you had, um, that you like review bands and you feature bands, and that you had just just done a feature on female bands, punk bands in the San Francisco scene. And I was like, yes. <laughs> but then you went on, and so of course I was like, Frantic Ginger. That's my frantic ginger bell. Wow! It's like we're wow. all in sync. This is synchronicity. So. Sorry about that. <laughs> never be sorry. That was planned. So, um, anyway. My fans. <laughs> they're like, oh my God, I want to ask you a question right now. I don't even know the number. I'm just fake dialing. You're not even live. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. They'd have to like dial in reverse yes. historic dialing there you go okay anyway so um we digress so but then it was weird because at the show i want to talk all about your magazine but first it was weird because at the show there were all these psychedelic bands and i was like what is this with these like 1960s vibe because i'm from los angeles and i mean i've been here since i was born but um i'm really used to the scene here and i've also lived in san francisco but that was a long time ago in the 90s so um it's just weird that there's this whole other scene in <laughs> psychedelic. <laughs> it's very, it knows, it knows. But anyway, there's this total scene in San Francisco that has t completely not hit Los Angeles. There's one band out here, um, when I think of the name, I'll tell you. But it's with Pazlin Shanton from um, Perfect Circle. And, uh, oh, it's Entrance Band. So they do the psychedelic oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. So, but they're like the only ones. There is not a scene down here. Uh, that to the contrary. If that it, I know if of. If it was from, if it wasn't for LA, mm -hmm. uh, all the heavy duty psych bands, especially yeah. the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, what was it? Um, we were just talking about this the other day. More heavier type bands uh -huh. that are now more popular down in LA. Yeah. They have that psych vibe. If it wasn't for that, then I don't think the psychedelic thing would it really would be inspired up in the Bay Area. So oh. thanks to L.A., I think I think it's it's just the undercurrent. It's been around for years. Well, but I yeah. think psychedelics <laughs> in, you know, in nature or in historically has been around since. Oh, this is more. This is a psychedelic show, oh, you guys. Oh boy, this, this is, is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Our phones are going off. What is happening? <laughs> okay, let's just we're gonna. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's going to stay on the video, but... What the... <laughs> Our phones are Hello. going off. Okay. Her computer is just taking <laughs> over. This is really funny. <laughs> I was messing with this session because I was trying to import your psychedelic yes. bands, and they totally psychedelic out my computer. My computer it's was a like, virus. no, Psych no virus. I'm only putting the right girl band on. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so psychedelic stuff was um, inspired from Los Angeles, well, but not now... Like it's, what bands are you talking about from down here? Which um, which? Well, I'm not saying bands. I'm just saying the festivals. They're oh. like you just mentioned. Uh, oh right, desert DIY, stars. Uh, yeah, desert stars, Moonblock, those type of festivals always host some kind of psychedelics. Yeah. And this year, Moonblock had you know an even even lineup. So yeah, this a lot of bands down here are inspired or um, play psych you know, music of yeah. some type. If it's inspired, you don't necessarily call them psych because any band can have some psych influences, even right. punk rock. Yeah. So it, it's always been around since the 60s. But and, and, and it's almost the same, like, I feel like rock has inspired almost everything. So everything has rock in it somewhere. Right, right. I mean, we had a group <laughs> discussion about that the other night. 
basically everything is psychedelic. It's just it's just it's not labeled that way anymore. It's yeah. different now compared to the 60s. But when you hear the samples that you've sent me, they're definitely, I yeah. would definitely call them psychedelic. Very melodic songwriters. Yeah. Um, which is good. It's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, talented. Mm -hmm. And they're not really copying anything. They're just inspired by it. Yeah. Which is, to me, is originality. Involved. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so before we hear some samples, tell me more about your magazine. Like, what? how did it start? Are you the only person involved? No. And what do you what do you feature? Like, how does it work? Where can we find it? Well, we're social media based. And back in the day, it used to be a magazine, paper format. But uh, we moved on to the Internet, which is perfect for Pal Magazine because... You constantly, there's constantly new music coming out, M music videos, SoundCloud, stuff like that. You constantly have to put that out there. So writing, very little writing, just quick reviews. Uh, cool. I, I like that. I have With a, a short attention span. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, that's what people are looking for when they s go through Instagram or Twitter. They just want a couple lines, maybe yeah. a link, and that's it. Yeah. And it's I have people that do want to write articles, and that's okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'll I'll accept those, but the basic, uh, the basic theme for Pal Magazine is social media, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. Cool. Okay, and so then I asked you, what does Pal stand for? Because I'm I'm an acronymer. I just made up a new word, but I was like, what does that stand for? And you said nothing, and I was <laughs> like, wait a minute. So it's just Pal, Pal, <laughs> Pal, like Batman, and you're like. No, but that's funny. So Well, no, actually, it was based on Batman. <laughs> it was! I'm so yes. happy because I love Batman! From the beginning of Pal Mag Magazine's history, it was Sweet. all comic book style format. Oh, and, very you cool. Know, uh, that's we, what I thought, because I see a big star. I see a fist and a big star, yellow. It's like, psh, You got it. That was right? the original logo. Yeah. That is totally why yeah. I'm feeling it. Yeah. And then, I, then things started to change, you know, the web and whatnot. I wanted to have it more subtle. And so it's just P-O-W. That's, that's <laughs> it. Subtle. Yeah. Pow. You're it like, still has that. Like, pow magazine. Pow. <laughs> NPR. Pow. It's like Pow <laughs> magazine. That's the, the sister company. No, I'm kidding. It's well, totally not. <laughs> speaking speaking of P-O-W and, you know, pronouncing things on the air, P-O-W, Pow, is really hard to say in a lot of ways. When you say it in, a, in an environment where people are around you, what's your magazine? It's Pow magazine. They don't hear P. They hear yeah. something else. They just see owl and they're exactly. like, are you okay? So I have to, <laughs> yeah, I have to spell it out all the time. <laughs> and it's hard for them to remember those three letters. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect for social media too. I know. You, you know. No, I mean, people are like, it's like, I'm not sure if I'm upset or happy that like everything's become so like boiled down. And it's like, if you can't get your 30 second elevator speech out, and explain to people what's going on in like 30 seconds or less, it, it, you just lose people. And so it's perfect that it's short. Yeah, yeah. What's what's short? <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, my God. By the way, this is Ginger in the Brain podcast show, which is like a really long name. But you know what? Whatevs. <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> we were able to get gingerthebrain.com because nobody else wanted it. Let's face it. Um, okay, so wait. Your, um, your social media is... Twitter is your at POW magazine. Your Facebook is facebook.com slash POW dot magazine. Your website is POW magazine dot org. <laughs> okay. And then um, <laughs> it's, I'm like INS. No, your Instagram is POW zine. P-O-W-Z-I-N-E. Yes. Okay. So tell me how it started and how long it's been around. Okay. It started... Um, in the late 80s as a magazine. Uh, magazines, fanzines, that's all they, there was. That was the internet, fanzines. Mm -hmm. And then I shut it down and then got into the web soon after that. Mm -hmm. And then I was... So you've been there from the beginning? Yes. So, wow, that is so cool. Yes. And then it, I was invited to, um, on a radio station, so a friend on a friend knew about my recordings with bands. Mm hmm and they decided, hey, let's do a special on this radio station, KFJC, uh, in Los Altos, California, which is the Bay Area. And sure, we'll do it. Um, let's do three hours. So we did the three hours on the month of Mayhem, which is where they do crazy specials, documentaries, whatever, on, on the radio for that whole four weeks in May. 
And Pow Magazine got really noticeable on the air. Cool. And then we did it again at the end of that month, another three, three, four hours. And that was really successful. So I started Facebook around that time. And I gradually started to test the waters and see if I can bring this back on social media. Mm-hmm. And then the following year, went back on the air and we did another, a third special on Pow Magazine. That was the last one. By that time, things were getting going, and I was more involved with the music scenes in the San Francisco Bay Area. So then how does Pal Magazine, like, make money? We don't. This is all volunteer base. That is so cool. So you just, like, have a passion for music, and you just want to spread the word. Spread the, spread the word the and support music, musicians, uh, bands, I love festivals. that. That is it, so cool. I, I'm, a, well, I'm a music fan, a fanatic, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, um, yes, a long time ago I used to play music, but my career got in the way, and I took that instead. Yeah. But going back, I was invited to get back into the music thing, but in a fanzine way uh, from another friend who actually started Pal Magazine. Okay, so now how many people is Pal Magazine? Right now there's uh, probably about four of us. That is so cool. And you guys are all, like, equally passionate, and you each add something different to the Now, yeah, I I do my interviews differently. I do them on camera. I just go around my iPad festivals or shows and I just interview bands or performers. Now and we're you should interview Frantic Ginger. Oh yeah. <laughs> we we did play your music video. Oh you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Sweet. And you got me on the air, so yeah. I have to commit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask you something else that I can't remember. Um, okay, so now you did so. You told me that you did like a feature on um, girl bands in San Francisco. Tell me, like punk bands, what would a feature look like? So, like, your magazine is like if I went to powermagazine.com, is it just like different stuff every week or month? Like, how often does the content change? Well, see, we're rebuilding the website and we decided to make it not dynamic. We don't want to add stuff to it, make it complicated like most music websites do have, uh-huh. you know, like streaming and whatnot. Down the road, we'll do that. But what we want to do is just get all the social media sites and put it in one place. Just link the videos, YouTube. We got YouTube, uh-huh. Palzine, and um, just link everything to make it simple for... Well, okay, your YouTube is Palzine. Yes. So this will all be in the description, you guys, right. if you're not taking notes like <laughs> I am. You guys, need, There's going to be a quiz at the end. Okay. Go ahead. So that's uh, basically what uh, the website will be. It just links to all our social media sites. But down the road, we'll start upgrading to uh, better support the bands. So the music. then you guys are just like the the go-to, like if somebody wanted to think, what can I use POW Magazine for, is, is like they just go to you for like what's happening. It's like the pulse on music in, in just the Bay Area or everywhere? No, or? You, you hit it right on the nail. I have had so many people in, in the Bay Area had said you got the pulse you got it you 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 know what's going on and of course i get a lot of help because i know a lot of people yeah. in, in the music scene that tell me hey you got to check out this band or we have a show coming down the road yeah maybe another date so i'll be there or so if i can't cool. be there i'll have i'll ask somebody on the staff to go there okay how long are you here in los angeles I'm going to be here until Monday morning, and I'm going back. Damn it, you're going to miss the Frantic Ginger Show March 5th at the Silver Lake Lounge. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Okay, so you know, it's all about promotion. Um, okay, so now I want to play one of your songs. Um, I actually want to... Oh, wait, I'm going back to the girl band. Um, you know, it always comes back to the girls. Um, so... When you did like a feature, was that like a feature on all the female fronted bands in San Francisco, or was it like all the punk bands? And, well, or what what did that look like? No, since it was sort of like a fundraiser, um, what I did is I showed up just to support that fundraiser and mm-hmm. support female bands because it was going to uh, a cause. 
and for a camp, rock camp for girls. So what Whoa. I did is I was hanging out and doing video, quick video clips and just a lot of pictures and post them on the, our social media sites. So tell me about this rock camp for girl, because I'm a super advocate of um, female musicians becoming songwriters and, and really pursuing their dreams. Well, so tell me what as that far is as about. I know, that's exactly what it is, but I'm not in, personally involved with it. That is very cool. So how could, if somebody wanted to check out some of those videos, would it be on like a rock camp site or? Actually, I took something? those those videos down a long time ago, but I was oh. thinking about upgrading uh, a lot of the archivals and I got uh -huh. a lot of archivals from the beginning of this the social media of, of Pal magazine cool that would be cool so I wanna, what I'm going to plan to do is put all the old videos which was that one um, support show that I did back in April I think it was and make it as one movie and just put it back up there oh cool yeah there's a lot of stuff I had to take down it just yeah. wasn't uh, I had see when I started Pal Magazine, the social media version of it. I wasn't quite sure how to do these movies, mm -hmm. but now I do. Now yeah. I have a format. Mm -hmm. So right, got it, because it's evolving. Yes. Okay, so since we're talking about um, the girl bands, I do want to play them, but I'm going to have to edit something. So why don't you tell me something while I do a little editing here? Okay. Okay. Well, um, Quaaludes is that the what we're going to be playing pretty soon? I think that's the only one we have. For uh, as far as female bands, uh, yes, that's yeah. exactly what we're gonna based do. in San Francisco. Uh, I love these girls. Um, they've been friends of mine for about almost year and a half. So let's hear the Quaaludes performing. <laughs> One of my favorite songs from that band. So. Cool. I like them. They have a lot of spunk. Yes, they do. <laughs> so now you said that Especially been... Amy. Amy, Amy just, just goes all out on stage. And so that's the singer? Yes. She's the one that just just takes that song and just rolls with it. How fun. Okay, yeah, so now she's... is she like just a vocalist or does she... No, she's just a vocalist. Okay, yeah. so there's a guitarist, a drummer, bass. Basics. And then a vocalist. Yes. Cool. I love that because... We're a three piece. Frantic Ginger is a three piece and <laughs> plug. Another plug. <laughs> I love it. So, um, but so I'm the singer and the bass player. So I'm always like attached to the microphone and I can't run around. So yeah. this next show that we have on March fifth at Silver Lake Lounge, um, I'm gonna use a headset and a wireless um bass setup so that I can like run around yeah. and be involved yeah. with people and the bartenders. I'm going to be like singing in the bartender's <laughs> face. I'm going to be like, what's up? I need more water. Lemon. I told you lemon with my water. Okay. So uh, that's so cool. Song. I love that. I that's know, great. Be fun, right? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> okay, so now let's hear. So let's move over to the psychedelic. Sure. So now do the wait. <laughs> A little back and forth. A little back and forth. Um, so the I'm following the, you. Do they? Does that girl band like represent um, the punk sound out there? Like, how many girl bands are like really having a day out there in San Francisco? As far as I know, from some friends on the internet, there is a lot of it's a lot of girl bands, I guess, female bands, mm -hmm. and uh, in the area of San Francisco, what represents punk, um, and. This is something we we would like to get into, but it's, I think it's more popular in the East Bay in terms of punk music. You told me that actually, yes. and uh, I would like to know more. Okay, we'll come back <laughs> on the show when you get more information. I definitely will because we're <laughs> okay, gonna, we want to cover more more broad <laughs> DIY type more bands. broads broads yeah more broads. I, we like to get okay. those yeah we want to check out the gals DIY broads broads. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to play now. I'm going to move now onto the psychedelic stuff. The psych bands. Ah, ooh. Um, cool Ghouls with a song called Orange Light. This quality is not going to be as good, and I will try to resolve that later if I can. But for now, I'm just going to turn up really loud and let the microphone pick it up. Okay, so here we go. The Cool Ghoul. <laughs> Yeah, I think Gooly. 
I think there's a really bright future for these guys. I, I really have a strong feeling about this one. It's bizarre because when you listen to it, you're like, this was recorded in 19... Yeah, really. <laughs> you start the sentence that way. Just... <laughs> Doesn't it seem... 1966. I captured that, those background vocals. They're just, they seem legit. Like, they're legitly psychedelic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's hear another one. We're going to hear... Anything else you want to tell me about the Cool Ghouls? Yeah, um, I like to mention the who makes up the Cool Ghouls. And tell me all uh, about Pat it. Pat Thompson, and there's Ryan Wong, and uh, Pat McDonald, and Alex Freshman. Cool. All great guys, good friends. And so they're in... Based in San Francisco. Sweet. Yeah. I love San Francisco. <laughs> you should come. I love yes. it there. <laughs> come and visit me. Mm. Come hang out. I will. Maybe we'll do a show up there. Actually, we're doing a show up there on Wednesday, but it's in Santa Rosa. Oh, it's that's like a private further, show. It's yeah. Like an yeah. Show. Okay. But anyway, um, okay, so now tell me about the electric. The electric magpie. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's just fun. It's like, because it, it starts serious and then it goes funny. I like that. <laughs> well, what they, is a magpie, first of all? Another group of guys uh, based in San Francisco. They play here in LA. But what uh, is a supported... magpie? Like a magpie. Bird? Does that have a definition? Yeah, I guess. It's a bird? I guess, it's right? It sounds like a food. A food? Oh, yes, it is. Is it a food? I think it is. We're going to have to look that up. We'll have to Google that one. Let's Google that one. <laughs> Okay, but it's an electric magpie, so don't eat it. Okay. Because it might not digest properly. Yeah, we can't, okay, eat, so... we can't eat these guys. <laughs> this is called Springtime Ease. Now, this... I love their names. I love the names they've chosen for this. This is definitely, sweet. to me, real psychedelic. Real cool. British-inspired late 60s. Okay, so these guys are also San Francisco. Yes. Tell me more about them. Did you tell me their names oh, yet? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, that would be Hunter Stroop, uh, Peter... Methel, uh, Sam Fa, and Mark Fon Fontaine. Fontaine. Yeah, Fontaine. Sorry about that. I just ruined that last name. <laughs> that was easy. Fontaine. I bet Fontaine comes up with the names. Get back to me on that. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> let's Google. All right, let's turn the song on and we're going to Google what is a magpie. Here we go. The Electric Magpie, Springtime Eve. They're going to kill me. This band's going to be like, you freaking L.A. girl. You're like <laughs> messing with our names. No, I like it. It's endearing. I'm just trying to add a little a little fun, a little variety to the Springtime Ease. Here we go. She means... <laughs> How they... 
If you want more, you're gonna have to buy that. <laughs> yeah. That was getting crazy. That was getting cool. They made you wait for that too. Yes. They're like, we're only gonna pull that I out. I like in the that. Middle. You yeah, need to crescendo. Get <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, their instrumentation was interesting. They have like a shaker, a flute, mm -hmm. and then they had a. Did they have a classical guitar and a steel string guitar? That's something we'll have to interview. It was interesting that they had like that combination. It yeah. was pretty cool. I love how they mixed all that into into this one song. Yeah. It's just one of my favorite off their album. So. And then whatever that psychedelic stuff was happening in the middle, I feel like turning that back on. You know, maybe we'll make that like the the at the end of the <laughs> show as we're going out. <laughs> That's cool. Maybe I'll use that at some point. <laughs> So, okay, so now how did you meet, how did you find these bands? These were just like referred to you? No, actually, um, when I was getting more involved in the music scene about two years ago, um, I noticed that there was this psych movement growing. It's been around, it's just been underground, but now it's just coming out, blossoming into this above the, the undercurrent, above the underground. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest movement right now in San Francisco is the psych scene. So what clubs are happening out there since I've been there? Was there well, Slims was happening? Or, and there yeah. was like another place called Something Six? A lot of clubs remember. are... <laughs> that's the problem with San Francisco. And I know this has been on the internet news. And things are changing uh, because cor tech companies are now taking over. Uh, landlords are now raising rents or just selling, selling mm -hmm. a property so they can um, you know, make room for engineers from other countries. It's getting crowded and it's getting very expensive, so a lot of clubs are closing. But the bands are hanging in there. I mean, I know there are a lot of other bands two years ago that are moved out and moved uh -huh. back, well, moved to LA to continue their careers. Mm -hmm. But this movement is hanging in there and they're still playing the clubs that still exist. exist. Like the chapel is one of my favorite ones in okay. the Mission District. Beautiful place. Is the bottom of the hill still open? Still there, cool. still hanging in yeah. there. And they do play there, too. I played there a few times. Yeah. So there's clubs like that still around San Francisco. And then what's the big one? Um, well, of course, the Fillmore. There. Right, right, the yeah. Fillmore. Yeah, I yeah. played there with BT. Um, yeah, the girl gets around. Cool that, was, that was a really nice <laughs> club. <laughs> yeah, bottom of the hill. Depend on the band. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. The smaller bands were at the bottom of the hill, but BT was really big, so we were selling out every. It, it seems show. pretty cool that when some of these clubs mix music, you know, you sort you have punk and you have psych, or you mm -hmm. have something in between, or rockabilly. Sometimes that these clubs in San Francisco do mix the bands, and I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think it's good because you get a variety of different tastes of oh, yeah, genres, totally. and I like that. And what other clubs are are happening up there? Well, the Chapel is my favorite oh, okay. uh, hall, music hall. Because they host more alternative in, indie type bands, yeah. DIY bands, punk to the entrance band, for instance. They had a show there. So that's my favorite club. Okay, cool. So now if Frantic Ginger was going to <laughs> huh, go to San Francisco and play a show up there, then the chapel would be like the place to be. Yes. Right? Yes. Excellent. Well, I'll be hitting you up for that. <laughs> okay, so now, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap well, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Pal Magazine will start doing live shows in San Francisco. Our first one is slated in March, but the date hasn't been set. Then we'll have another one in the middle of the year and then a really big one at the end of the year. Cool. So okay. It, and we're growing. So at the chapel? No, I'm not sure yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Will it be like Desert Stars? Like, is that kind of... I mean, I know that was gigantic and they're... I mean, not gigantic, but it seemed like a big production because there were like well, 20 or 30 bands over yeah. multiple days. At, and then you know what's so cool about Desert Stars, DSF, is that it's not a large crowd. Mm -hmm. which I know. Is, Tommy wants to keep it that way. Yeah. He wants to keep the amount of people there with all these great bands, all yeah. this mixture of bands. I loved that. That's... Yeah, Yes, yeah, you know it's intimate. I mean, it's, you're really close to everybody. You're close to the bands. You know, they're hanging out too, listening to the other bands. I know. What I really loved was that the bands were listening to the other bands. It wasn't mm. just like, "Well, it's not my time to go on." So I'm exactly, just sitting yeah. in my pretend green room. That's my yeah. band around the back of the tent. But I mean, there is no green room. I don't I know, know why anybody says that. <laughs> I've heard that <laughs> before. Okay. Oh, just go around the corner. That's your green room. I know. <laughs> like, see that tent over there? Um, there's not even really a tent. Um, but. <laughs> 
But no, it was like they were really supportive of each other. All the yes. bands were supportive. You know who I loved there that was a total find for me was Little Barry. Oh, yes. I loved yes. Little Barry. He was yes. so fun. <laughs> Love his. He was, he was like an insane Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. I mean, not insane, but like. Um, you know, not as not as psychedelic and not as like super rock. He was just like a a hard, like a Ramones and Jimi Hendrix mixed. Exactly, kind of. Yeah, you know what I mean. You got the psych, the punk. You got all this this energy that he was doing on stage. That was his style. That's his thing. I that loved I think him. And they again, were a trio. That's that's originality to me. Even yeah. though he was inspired by different styles of music. So yeah, yeah. Okay, well, then that's it. Thank you for coming and visiting us. Yeah. I am so glad that you came all the way from, from San Francisco just to visit us. I know you came here for other reasons, too. Oh, <laughs> yes. Pal Magazine does cover other things, too, not just music. No, it's all about <laughs> us. But thank you so much for coming here and being with us today. And thanks for um, just your general passion about promoting bands and being involved in music i think it's awesome it's i mean we need people like you because most of the musicians are doing it and they don't usually get paid either i mean which is terrible <laughs> i mean but like a lot of bands that are just like trying to do original music and not necessarily placing songs on film and tv or something they're not necessarily making money for quite some time unless they're doing covers or whatever so yeah you know i got i got a little quick story to tell yeah you. tell me i'm visiting uh the expo in uh hilton and alex uh, it's called the Conscious Life Expo, which is the paranormal thing. Oh my thing. gosh! Right, uh, life, different, you know, lifestyles, yes, and all that. And a psychic told me, uh, I, we're media, so we get some privileges. The psychic told me that you need to, what you need to do is you need to congratulate yourself more than the people around you. You're not doing that, <laughs> and you know no. why? Because that's what I, I've always believed. Doing music for uh, for promoting music for other bands, it should be focused on those bands, not me. I'm just the guy in the background. And this psychic just nailed it. Because you should give yourself some credit. She didn't even know what the hell I was doing. So um, she didn't well, know. Well, I absolutely agree with her. I mean, because you're bringing stuff to the top. It's like sometimes bands are too involved in their daily whatever it is, arguing with each other over the last <laughs> banana in the tour van. But I mean... <laughs> Which is a true story for my one of my bands, but anyway, another podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, but like you're able to like boil it, see things from a bigger picture. Like you can see trends. Like like you were saying before, you're like on the pulse, like on the beat. You can see the trends coming and going. You're not just like one band and one genre doing one thing. You're like yay for you guys for doing that. But you're able to see like the ebbs and flows of what's going on, and then bring it to the top to the people to listeners and really like i mean in one of your magazine um whatever you put out like your um episodes or mm-hmm. whatever you call right. them yes. then um you're probably talking about a few bands and you're able to like promote a bunch of bands i mean i think that's really important that's great i mean because otherwise it's all siloed everything's siloed it's like here's this club with here's these bands here's this club with here are these bands but you're like let me check everything out, and then I'm going to do my review and put all the best together. It's right. like boiling all the good stuff up to the top. The cream. You you name you you nailed my process. You you <laughs> got it all laid out, and that's exactly what I do. Sweet, the yes. creme de la creme. Yes, uh, that pastry. Is, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make this pastry that's t- is good. A lot of sugar on it, and people will buy it. Yeah. And I think I'm doing it. I think I'm getting it together. Well, now, so can't people? donate to the magazine or something well, like that? Well, oh, they can donate to their time. we got photographers. We oh, got, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is so cool. You're like, we don't want your money, but we want your life. <laughs> <laughs> your but life blood. Of course, down the road, if we get larger and we want sh- live shows, you know, sometimes that costs money. So we'll, right. we'll have to do something like Kickstarter or something like that. Yeah. You know, something what Tommy does for uh, Desert Stars. Right. But that's way down the future. So we'll be looking out yeah. for that. Yeah. So that will be so cool. Yeah, thank you so much for being a supporter. Sure, thank you. Yay, Dennis <laughs> Gonzalez from Pal Magazine. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for listening to Ginger and the Brain Podcast Show. Hey! hey.
guys, we just realized that we forgot to explain to you that we figured out what a magpie was, right? I was half right. You were totally right. I was totally right. Okay, <laughs> spill the beans. Tell us what it was. It's a magpie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's a bird. It's a crow. It's a crow. Yeah. So it's an electric magpie. So it's an electric crow. So he's all... Yeah. Ah! So let's crow out this show. Ready? Yes. One, two, three. Ah!